Welcome to Kyle's Big Board, presented by the Straight Facts Podcast, the series where we count down the top prospects in the upcoming NBA draft and analyze their games. Today we'll be looking at the number 12 prospect on my big board, Aaron Nesmith. Nesmith is a shooting guard from Charlestown, South Carolina, who played two seasons of college ball at the Vanderbilt University. Let's break down his game. First, let's get into his strengths. The first strength for me is he's just a gifted shooter. Though we only played 14 games last season as the season was cut short due to a foot injury, he showed he was one of the best shooters in all of college basketball. He shot 52% from three on over eight attempts per game and averaged 23 points. A huge part for me looking at him as a prospect is the range he showed last year. He made many threes well behind the college line, which would be considered deep threes even in the NBA. He also has the moves needed to get these open threes in the NBA. Off the ball, he's very capable of getting himself open, but when he has the ball, he's just as effective. He utilizes the jab step and ball fakes a lot, and with the quick shot that he has, all he needs is a slight shift in the defender to get his shot up. In today's NBA, he'd be a great prospect just off of his catch and shoot ability, but when you add in these moves he has, he takes it to the next level, being able to create his own shots. This makes him an elite prospect. The next strength is his maturity and feel for the game. While he only played two seasons, or really one and a half of college ball, his basketball IQ is well above most other players in this draft. He really understands his role on the court, and as a rookie coming into the NBA, that's the key to maximizing your production. He's not going to take bad shots. Looking through his game film, there aren't too many forced shots, and that's very impressive for someone who averages 23 points a game. This is backed up by his field goal percentage, which was over 50%. For whatever team drafts him, he's going to be looked upon to space the floor, hit open shots, and play defense, and he understands this role. While the 3 and D guys aren't the flashy prospects, they're essential to winning basketball games in today's NBA, and when you can find one that's as good of a shooter as Nesmith is, you can't pass up on him. Now we have to move on to Nesmith's weaknesses. The first weakness is his ability to attack the basket. He's not going to break down a defender to get to the hole. He can to get his shot up, but say someone helps or he doesn't get enough space, he's not reliable enough to get you a basket at the rim. His handle kind of breaks down in these scenarios too, and he relies too much on strength rather than skill to make these shots. Watching these highlights, yes he's getting buckets, but it is evident that he's not doing anything spectacular. He's just bigger and stronger and knows when to get his shot up. This isn't going to fly for a rookie in the NBA. The next weakness is just defensive inconsistency. He gets lazy sometimes on the defensive side of the ball, especially when he's on the ball. Beating him can be as simple as a screen or a simple jab step and he has slow footwork to recover from these situations in the first place, so there's no room for that on-ball inconsistency. Upside though, he's a solid athlete, and he has a 6'10 wingspan, so the defensive potential is there, but he needs to start being consistently locked in on the floor and do a better job of utilizing his length on that side of the ball. Now let's move on to an NBA comparison. As for Nesmith, there's one guy whose game really sticks out to me as very similar to his, and it's Cam Johnson. Lights out shooters with range, they can pull from anywhere, and they're called upon to be 3 and D guys. Cam Johnson was picked 11th in last year's draft, and while he showed a little more upside of being an all-around player, he's not even close to the shooter Nesmith is, and we know Cam Johnson can shoot, that's how good Nesmith is. His upside, however, has flashes of Buddy Heald. If he can become more of an all-around offensive threat and handle the ball a little bit better, I think this is the player Nesmith should model his game around and strive to be in the NBA. To conclude, Aaron Nesmith is the best shooter in the draft, and the way basketball is played in today's NBA sets up extremely well for a guy of Nesmith's talent. At only 20 years old, he's already coming to the league with an elite jumper, even for the NBA level, which makes him an instant threat and allows him to be a floor spacer for any team who drafts him. Right now, he's lacking some of the other skills, so I can't have him in my top 10, but he has the potential to really be one of the best players in the entire draft. Thanks for tuning in to the third episode of Kyle's Big Board, presented by the Straight Facts Podcast. Let me know what you guys think of Aaron Nesmith in the comment section down below, and don't forget to tune in next time when I break down the number 11 player on my big board. I hope everyone's staying safe, staying healthy, and of course, getting buckets. I'll see you guys next time.